Hello everybody, welcome to our third and final practice problem in module 14. I hope you're not disappointed, there's only three problems. I know that's fewer than other modules. But as you've seen, these problems have been exhaustive. There's been a lot going on in each of them. We've done a lot of work on each of these and we've covered pretty well everything in a simple linear regression environment. So this next one, our last one, I'm going to go through this as efficiently as possible. I'm going to use what we've learned in terms of all of the different relationships between our values within these tables, and I'm going to try to complete this with as few long, tedious calculations as possible. I'm going to take all the shortcuts that I can. So let's just jump right into it. My parents once told me that the longer they're married, the happier they were. My parents have just, they're over 50 years they've been married now. My goodness, they must be ecstatic if this relationship holds. They must be so happy. So here we have the following data. Here we have our number of observations. We have our years married. So this is our independent variable and we have our happiness index, some measure of happiness. So here I have that dependent variable. Our regression model, that expected happiness is some linear function of years married. So this is the regression model that we're gonna to try to predict. We're gonna to try to estimate this regression model. So let's just jump into what we have to work with. Once again, different starting point than any of the previous problems, different little tidbits of information. So let's see what we can do with this. Right away, I look at the regression statistics. Multiple r, I know that's just the square root of the r squared. So I can very quickly, if I just square that, that gives me my r squared, 0.71. That was pretty straightforward. Standard error, hmm, not quite yet, I can't get that. Observations, yes, that one I have right readily available. We have five observations. Let's come down into the ANOVA table now. Degrees of freedom, in all of my examples, I've kept my sample sizes to a minimum. We've always just had those five observations. And then a simple linear regression, k minus 1 is always equal to 1, because in a simple linear regression, k is always 2. In module 15, that's going to change. We'll have more predictor variables, more independent variables. Our sum of squares residual, I'm using a slightly different term here. This is also error. You'll see this term residual come up again in module 15, and we'll talk more about it then. This is n minus k, 5 minus 2 is 3, and total, this is all the same here, okay? So our degrees of freedom. Now I can hopefully clearly see how I can get my mean squared error, right? I want to get this value here because I have my sum of squares is given to me, 215.77, divided by the degrees of freedom that we just obtained. So that gives me my mean square error of 71.92. Okay, what's next? Well, now I can see, okay, well, I've got mean squared error and I've got that F. And I know this relationship that the F is mean squared regression over mean squared error. So I have that the F is 743, and that's MSR over that mean squared error, which is 7192. Okay, so I can use that, 7192 times 7.43. So that gives me my sum of squares regression of 534.37. Good. Now I've got my mean squared regression because, again, I divide that by its degrees of freedom, which in this case is just 1. 
I've got my SST because if I add SSR to uh, SSE plus 215.77, that gives me my SST. So there we've completed our ANOVA. Now I can look back and say, oh, I can finish up this here because, of course, I know that that's the square root of MSE, which we just obtained. So my square root of MSE, so that's 8.48. Okay, this is coming along well. Now we're into what has been historically kind of a time-consuming exercise, filling out these uh, estimated regression values. Let's start with our intercept. I've got the coefficient and I've got the t-stat, so I should be able to get that standard error because I know that the t-statistic is the coefficient divided by the standard error. So if 746 is equal to 60.47, well, I can solve for that standard error. So that's going to be 6047 divided by 746. There's my standard error, 8.11. Good. We can get those upper and lower limits. No real shortcut here. That's the point estimate, plus or minus that critical value, which again, three degrees of freedom, 95%, so this is 0 0.025 times that standard error. So that coefficient is 60.47, plus or minus, we already know what that T is from previous problems, but let's just go down to our T tables. And look at this mess, this is still a mess from previous problems. And here's our three degrees of freedom. Here's our 0.025. There's that critical, 3.182. Okay, moving along, 3.182. Now that standard error, we just obtained that, was 8.11. Upper limit. 6047 plus 3182 times 8011, 86.28. And the lower limit, 6047 minus 3182 times 8011. And that lower limit is 3466. Okay, we have our coefficient, our intercept coefficient. Now, for our years married, well, how can I go about doing this one? Well, again, we can take advantage of some of the tidbits of information that we have available. Here I know I have the relationship between the intercept and the slope, right? You might again be thinking, oh, that coefficient for slope I need to come back to the data and I need to calculate all of those differences and squared and add them all together. But don't forget, once we have that, that intercept, well, remember the relationship between the intercept and the slope is relatively straightforward. So I have that intercept, 60.47, I have y bar, the average value of y, here is 80 minus b1, and x bar, I have that here is 31.8. And so now I can solve for the slope. 6047 minus 80 divided by 31.8, and that gives me my coefficient of 0.61. Much faster than calculating all of those squared differences, that whole formula for that slope. 
Now, a standard error, TSTAT. Okay, what can I do here? Well, again, we might be thinking that standard error, well, that standard error, I need the standard error of the regression that I have, but what about all of this stuff? Remember we needed this piece in that denominator that was all those square differences. Well, this time, let's take a bit of a shortcut because here we have that F. And I know the relationship. That the F with one numerator is equal to the T squared. So if I have the F, if I take the square root of that F, there's my t, 2.73. Well, now I can get that standard error in the same way that we did for the y-intercept, using this same relationship here. I have that t statistic is 273. This is equal to 0.61 divided by that standard error. So that standard error is 0.61 divided by 273. And that gives me that standard error is 0.22. A little bit faster. Now for our, our confidence intervals. No shortcuts here. Here we'll have our coefficient, 0.61, plus or minus that same critical value, times that standard error. Let's get the upper first, 0.61 plus 3182 times 0.22, 1.31, and the lower, 0.61 minus 3182 times 0.22, negative 0.09. Here I can see the zero exists between our two limits. That tells me something. Now I did skip over that p-value. Why did I skip over that p-value? It's actually quite simple because again, the f-test and the t-test on the slope are identical when we're looking at a simple linear regression. So this p-value is 0.07. Well, I know right away that p-value is going to be exactly the same to every decimal place. So what have we found? Looking at the f-test. Oops. Looking at the f-test, our p-value is 0.07. If I look at that null and alternative hypotheses, beta 1 is equal to 0, beta 1 is not equal to 0, the f-test supports the null hypotheses. We're unable to show that this model is statistically significant. And certainly, we get the same conclusion on the t-test. Right, that t-test, the null and alternative is exactly the same, although this is performed as a two-tail t-test as opposed to an upper-tail f-test. But here we find again that our evidence supports the null hypothesis. And that coefficient is not statistically different from zero which means that this relationship, I should actually go like this, this relationship is not statistically valid. That coefficient is not statistically different from zero, which means that we do not have any information, we do not have any evidence to support the claim that there exists a relationship between happiness and the length of time that you've been married. Okay, so that one was much faster. We took advantage of some additional shortcuts. And upon finding that the relationship is not statistically significant, there's no real reason to do anything else. I'm not going to bother using this for prediction. 
I'm not going to worry about confidence intervals for predicted values or prediction intervals. Here I've gone through, I've stated my model, I've estimated that regression equation, and we found no evidence to show that the relationship is statistically significant. So that's it. That's it for module 14. We'll come back later, module 15, and you will see there's a lot to do in module 15. Module 14 is a starting point. It's an introduction to regression analysis. I know it doesn't feel like an introduction because it's not easy, but it's an introduction to regression analysis. Module 15, now we get into all kinds of stuff. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.